Welcome to our uh, session. Um, before everything, sorry for my English. So we come from France, and uh, um, if you don't understand something, don't hesitate to ask me later. Uh, so um, my name is uh, Mohamed Marouen. Uh, I'm the CEO and co-founder of uh, SOEN, and here with me, uh, Victor Larmaro, who is our uh, tech art uh, leader in uh, SOEN. And uh, Alstom is the one of the leader in the world on the train manufacturing and railway and transport sector. Uh, and together we created uh, the Alstom Virtual Showroom, which is an interactive world, fully interactive world, uh, where they can show all their product. Uh, but before uh, talking about the project, I want to say a few words about Soen. And we'll start with some images for some of our Unreal projects. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so Soen was founded 12 years ago in France, and we today we are based both in uh, Paris and Tunis with the two of our companies. Um, our motto is really building an entertaining and sensory world without limits on subject, blurring the boundaries between the physical and the digital world. Um, and for that, we do a lot of stuff. We are uh, immersive experience creator. Um, we work for the B2B, but also for the B2C market. Um, and uh, for our clients, most of all, we create concepts. We create concepts to help them innovate in their communication. Their communication for their target, the public, but also their uh, internal communication. And uh, for that, we really try to harvest all the technology uh, that we can have on the market, VR, AR, AI, um, but also we create our own technological bricks that we use in all the projects that we create, create for our clients. Um, we also create digital installment where we try really to bring the content and to connect it with the uh, physical space that uh, it is in. Um, we develop application and tool for our client, and also we do shooting in the real life, but also in the unreal world. We work for a lot of different sectors. Uh, we have, for example, the entertainment uh, industry with the Walt Disney Company. Uh, we work for the luxury with Cartier or LVMH, but also industrial like Alstom or Valeo. Uh, in the 12 years of our existence, we won some awards, but um, one of our la uh, lastest awards uh, was won with Unreal Engine for uh, the operation of the Walt Disney Company that revealed the uh, platform Disney+. Plus. And of course, we are doing all this with our partner, like Epic. Now, let's go into the project. And before that, a small trailer to summarize the project.
Thank you. As you've seen, there's a lot happening in this project, and um, we are going to talk about the different ingredients to create this kind of project, but first of all, the most important of ingredient is the team to build this project. Uh, and this team is composed of a lot of person. We start with the, the team in Alstom. Some of them are here with us. Uh, and uh, they, they were working with us uh, every day uh, to better understand their, uh, their work, to, to help us with the data, because there's a lot of data. Um, and we have a really great client that can help us build this kind of project. Um, but also the team of SOEN, some of them uh, worked with us uh, for a few days, other months on this project. But all the team from uh, SOEN in Paris, in uh, Tacolor and Tunisia worked to make this project a success. And finally, I want to have a very big thank to Jean-Marc Sauvetre and Franck Deban from Epic France because they helped also a lot before, during, and after the project. So a huge applause, please, for the team that made the project real. And to finish with uh, one of the members of this uh, team, Alexis, who is the father of uh, the virtual showroom, he couldn't make it to uh, come here uh, with us, so he gave me a small message to give you. So let's hear Alexis. Hello, everyone. And thank you, Mohamed, to give me the opportunity to present the Alstom approach for this ambitious project from where I am right now. Actually, we wanted to develop a digital portfolio of our different businesses. And to achieve this vision, we had to face two main challenges. The first was the quantity of data to import in this application. And this was allowed by Nanite. And the second challenge was linked to the Alstom activities. As you know, Alstom is not only a trend provider. We design also digital solutions to manage complex mobility systems. And in this case, we had to show the invisible. And so one supported us in a very proactive way by creating a full virtual world. I think we can say that these two goals were totally achieved. If you look, the result speaks by itself. And now I will let Mohamed explain you the other steps of the project. Bye, I have a train to catch. Thank you, Alexi. So how do we create the Alstom virtual city? Um, a little bit of context. Like you said in the beginning, Alstom is leading the way in the uh, transport sector uh, by innovating through uh, train uh, manufacturing, but also digital solution, which is things that are not that easy to see uh, with our eyes. And for that, that's why they needed to create this project. Um, we, uh, we integrated into the project three, 13 uh, full trains, 10 different uh, detail components. We worked with five domains of activity in Alstom, uh, and we had only seven months to do the first uh, release of the project. Um, and the goal, of course, is really to build a complex, uh, interactive uh, world when Alstom can sh show all their products and services, uh, can do realistic scenarios uh, to their client to communicate. But also this project is really need to be a tool to address a lot of needs. Uh, interactive needs, but also uh, media creation so that they can use them uh, outside uh, in the um, uh, social networks uh, and show them to their clients. And like I said, it's a very big project. We created a four kilometer square uh, city and it is challenging. And to find the right solution, of course, Unreal 5 with the new features was the solution. Um, some of this, uh, these features uh, were mandatory to create that kind of uh, project. Let's go through some of the challenges that we had. Um, the first one is really that trains are very complex in heavy 3D data. And with Nanite, we could bring these trains with little effort of op optimization and use them, and we could see them in all the detail needed. Um, we needed also for the videos and for all the scenario to have a real-time, realistic, dynamic look. And 
With Lumen and the virtual shadow maps, we could, in a matter of clicks, change all the looks and have everything adapted to it. After that, the train transportation needs large environment. To give you an example, we needed to at least 400 meters separating each train station. And for that, we need to stream a large world like this in a very performant way. And with word partition in the HLOD, we could do it easily. And like I said, we had a lot of video that we uh, needed to create. And for that, we need to have a visual co uh, coherence between what's in the interactive application, but also in the videos. And we just needed to go some through assets from the uh, interactive application, bring them to sequencer, uh, animate the camera, animate the assets, and with the movie and the crew, we had the video. As easy as that. And like you saw, with a big uh, project like that, we need a big team. And managing a big team that will work uh, in a parallel task at the same time uh, could be very challenging. Um, that's why the integration of source control directly in Unreal Engine uh, with Pairforce and also with one file per asset make us really be very efficient in what we are creating and have everyone work on the same scene at the same time. For the timeline of the project, it's um, the main step where prototyping. Of course, we start, started with a lot of drawing, illustration. We did the plan of the city, um, how we put each station, where we put it. Um, and we uh, block out, of course, the city. Uh, and when we had something that was uh, good for us and for Alstom, we understood what the tool that we needed to create for this project to make it uh, reality. Uh, so we started the, the, the process of developing the tools. Um, and meanwhile, we put it um, temporary assets from the marketplace for our, from our library also, uh, so that we could start uh, developing some of the feature of the application, uh, but also to continuously visualize the city uh, when it evolves. Um, and with, when the tools started to be ready, we started the enrichment and having the final aspect of the city by bringing uh, part, uh, each part each time uh, onto the final map uh, with these tools. Of course, I, uh, I talked about the development and, uh, and the interactive features. We'll see some of these features uh, later on. Um, and in the, in the same time, we were creating a lot of videos. Um, final step, of course, the optimization of the full application to get a very smooth experience uh, for the uh, target of Alstom. Uh, we started the project on um, the end of uh, January till September. And of course, we moved from Unreal uh, main gate to, uh, uh, to the first early access uh, version. Uh, and finally, we released the first version in uh, UE uh, 503. Now, let's go into the recipe of a living world. To have a truly interactive living world, our recipe is to have humans, infrastructure, buildings, traffic, and of course, trains. Victor, can you talk a little bit about humans? Yes, so we needed to populate the world with uh, uh, plenty of humans to make a believable city, a living city. So we were faced uh, to some problems, like we needed to have a, a good AI. Uh, with the timeline of the project, we needed to have it quickly implemented in the world, and uh, we needed realism for, for our project. So we uh, decided to go for a Toolchef Atoms real-time solution, which is a plugin for Unreal Engine. Um, yeah, very uh, light in performance, uh, it's really good for performance, and it's also uh, really easy to use and to implement quickly. Uh, we went with this, and uh, for the realism of the humans, we uh, used the meta-humans from uh, the City Crowd Sample uh, project uh, that you can have uh, since uh, uh, the Matrix demo was released. So uh, that's what we went for. <clears throat> but even if these tools were really a good solution, 
there weren't enough for our some needs. Um, and we need to tweak these tools and to change them and implement several other features into them to get the result that we needed. For example, we uh, created a new clothing, worker clothing for uh, uh, to show the maintenance of the train. For example, we created the system to add the logo of Alstom in each of the uh, clothing of the metahumans. Uh, we also created uh, accessory uh, for some of the uh, aspect of the project and a randomization system uh, that come in front of the clothing to have color variety in the city when we're generating the crowd. Um, we created even uh, for inclusivity uh, a blind metahuman and the metahuman on wheelchair where we can implement any type of face or body into uh, these uh, with metahumans. For the um, animation part, uh, we needed for the videos to get very quick and very fast on creating this video. Uh, so we created a library of animation that we brought into the project. Um, and with control rig, we could adjust this animation on each uh, shot without the need to really animate specifically each shot individually. And this was a really lifesaver. After that, we'll move into the infrastructure for the road and the rails. Victor. So, uh, the, for the roads and rails, uh, we decided to go uh, to um, a system based with uh, intersections and splines. Uh, we set up a system based on a procedural road generator from the marketplace. Uh, we tweaked it uh, so it will uh, fulfill our needs. And you know, the goal was to have a um, quick, um, development of, uh, of the roads, the quick uh, changement to, to be able to move the road easily in the city and while we were building it. So you, we made uh, those uh, intersections, as you can see on the right here. Uh, those are the simple model that we made. And uh, just with the spline, we, uh, we created a spline mesh and uh, it spawns uh, some assets on the side of the road. And to put that together uh, and to have it really efficient because the uh, spline mesh are pretty heavy for the um, engine and they don't support nanite. So we make a um, quick uh, actor utility action uh, that, was, uh, that allowed us to bake the spline mesh once we were happy with the road. Uh, we could bake it and turn it into a nanite mesh. We did the same for the railway. Uh, all the rails are, are using the same uh, system. Instead of intersection, we got uh, stations and uh, spline mesh uh, going uh, from one station to another. We used also uh, to prevent tiling, uh, invisible tiling on the asphalt of the road. Um, after seeing the Matrix Awakens uh, demo, uh, we decided to go with a cell bombing uh, shader uh, to, as you can see on the, on the images, to um, uh, splatter texture uh, a bit everywhere and be able to, you don't see the tiling when you zoom out uh, in and, the sky. And again, um, these were needed because the city was made to be seen from afar, but we could zoom in very and go into ground level and the tiling can be a huge uh, visual problem. Now that we have the roads and the rails, uh, we needed to put the buildings. Um, in a city, buildings really reflect the identity of the city. And this virtual city needed to reflect the identity of Alstom. That's why we needed to create a tool uh, that can uh, make us build different building very fast, but also um, be having a specific look and adapt them to this identity. Uh, so that's why we went uh, into creating a Houdini uh, tool uh, that uh, uh, Victor will explain. Uh, so we were nanite tile based approach. So uh, it's, uh, as you can see on the concept, uh, we uh, designed um, tiles of buildings uh, that fit well together. And we did that for every type of building. As you can see on the left, uh, there is a concept for a modern building. On the right, it's more for a uh, historical building, but it's the same system, it's the same Houdini tool that will create both. And uh, there were some rules to follow, of course, 
uh, to have uh, the good pixel density and everything on the on the tiles, and uh, to use uh, plenty of polygons if we want, because uh, we get nanite. Uh, and the, this tool uh, could make us, even with a small spine, for example, uh, draw the shape of the building, uh, but also we could have a lot of splines to generate multiple buildings at the same time. Yes, uh, as you can see, we had a, a tool that was um, very easy to use uh, specifically and also globally. Like you could uh, create a template uh, for a building and just draw a spline in Unreal and put the uh, Houdini asset on it, and we grow a building, and you could change one tile if you want, uh, or you could change one parameter specifically if you didn't want to change everything of the building. Uh, to implement them in the world, we use a packed level actor, uh, a feature from uh, Android 5, uh, which allowed us to uh, automatically uh, uh, optimize uh, the buildings. We used also um, we created a system that we called Courtyard that allowed us to um, fill the gaps between the buildings and the roads or the buildings and the other buildings. And it will create pathways and, uh, and place trees and bench and uh, play areas between all the, all the buildings. And all of this were dynamic. We really use the style that you want. We put it onto the, the tool and it filled the, the gaps. And we also uh, used, um, as you can see here, uh, we used the custom primitive uh, uh, data uh, inside of this Houdini um, tool to create variation. In, uh, if you look pretty closely, all those buildings doesn't have the same colors. Uh, they are sometimes more yellowish, sometimes more reddish, uh, to create a little bit of variation. And that's something that's created inside, uh, uh, that's assigned inside of uh, the Houdini tool uh, to the building, and that the shader will interpret to, uh, to modify. Uh, but it's the same shader for every, uh, every building we see here. <clears throat> more than the, um, the common building that we created would fill almost uh, all the map, uh, we needed to create also specific building. For that, we, uh, we have a more uh, classical uh, pipeline from design to, to, uh, to modelization, texturization, and shaders, um, as you can see. And uh, most of these buildings were uh, train station. Uh, we needed uh, the train station to really pop into the map uh, because uh, to see better the hero of the story, the trains. Um, that's why we went into this kind of, uh, of pipeline uh, for the specific buildings. And after we have roads and buildings, we need movements with the traffic. Yes, yeah, so the traffic was uh, done uh, with a car traffic logic based on a system from the marketplace. Uh, we made our own um, cars uh, to, put it, uh, to put on the in the city to have uh, modern cars. Now comes the trains. Uh, and for the trains, numbers, like I said, we had 13 fully shaded dynamic trains. We had the interior, also the exterior. Um, and we needed to implement a specific livery uh, on each of these uh, train uh, to uh, standardize the visual look of all the train and product of Alstom. Let's dive in a little bit more in the system of the trains. So the trains were made uh, from data that uh, Alstom uh, gave us, and uh, we had to implement them in the engine. So with Nanite, it didn't have too much work on the um, triangle count to do, but uh, we needed uh, to do works on the UVs and on the um, material assignment, because there are a lot of material inside of a train. And so we needed uh, plenty of trains. So we needed uh, to have the same materials on multiple trains, like the floor uh, was sometimes the same as uh, the blankets or anything, actually. So we had to um, confirm a good textile density and a, a good um, matching names between trains to uh, optimize the workflow. Uh, we needed also to make a custom uh, 
custom channel of UVs uh, to put the livery on because it's really a big texture that needs to be really precise and uh, to follow some strict rules. So we had to, to make a, a, big, a big map that we use a virtual texture to import inside of the, the engine. And to talk a little bit about the setup and how the AI uh, was um, uh, controlling the train, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the blueprint setup. So we've got train cars that's uh, fully shaded uh, um, with everything we need inside of it uh, to look good. And to uh, join them together, we created a, a train blueprints that uh, you could set the number of train cars you want. So you could have a very long train or a very short train. You could set the distance between each, um, each train car. And uh, we, for the gangways between each train car, we created the spline meshes to deform uh, and to adapt uh, on uh, each frame uh, to bend uh, very well, because the train follows a, a spline, but it doesn't bend and everywhere on the plane, it only bends uh, between the trainways, uh, the train cars. So we created a, a fully automated behavior that the train, when you play, it will follow a spline. And when it will uh, collide with a station, it will stop and open its door, and let people get out or wait a bit, and then close its door, and then it continues its work. Uh, when he goes at the end of his spline, he will just turn back, go on the other track, and uh, do the same in the uh, other way. So it will be really persistent in the world and uh, always uh, live. But we needed also to have trains, uh, a better control of trains for the videos. So we make a, a little uh, checkbox to uh, erase this compartment, this behavior, and, and to uh, be able to keyframe every. Uh, every position we want of the train for the videos and so that uh, the artist uh, doing the videos could uh, really do the video he wants. So after we got all these elements for the virtual city, uh, we're gonna talk about the uh, deliverable of this, uh, this project. Um, and this deliverable comes from uh, one unique uh, big uh, Unreal Engine uh, project. So we have um, the interactivity inside the universe, but also we have other applications that were extracted and created from all these assets in this project. So let's go into uh, some of the interactivity. Um, the main map, when you arrive into the application, uh, lets you really uh, go visit the city and navigate. Uh, you could uh, fly very high or get um, near the rooftops. Um, and also, you have specific points when you can teleport, but also you could um, click on a button to get into an immersive view on ground level and move uh, like a human in this uh, part of the city. Um, and like I said, everything is automated uh, in the city. Uh, you can see we have a, a different type of part of the city, the historical part, uh, the train station. Uh, you could uh, play by following a train moving uh, automatically into the city. Uh, there is a lot to see. Um, after the, the, the city, you can go from uh, the view of the city into some specific part, like the train uh, visualization. Um, this uh, uh, this uh, part of the application um, was created to really come see each train uh, and get all the information you need about the train. Technical data, uh, you could zoom into the train, turn around the train. Uh, even we created some uh, uh, small video that show uh, features of the train when you can click and have them directly into this part of the application. And you can access all the train through a menu uh, like you can see uh, the image. We have also um, the 3D component visualization. Uh, in this part, we, we get emerged into a stylized depot, uh, and we have, um, uh, we have all the components that Alstom uh, manufacture, and we can move from component to component, either visually by clicking on it on the screen, or we can uh, choose the name of the component uh, on a menu, 
Um, we create also an interactive map showing where uh, these components are uh, built and where they are sold. Um, and like the trains, you could zoom into the component, you can turn around it um, and see really all the details. Uh, to give you some numbers, some of these components uh, that only part of the, uh, of the train um, have uh, gigabytes of data on them. Uh, after that, we have the simulation part of the virtual city. Um, right now, we implemented the simulation for the uh, solution of, uh, of Alstom, for the signaling uh, part of Alstom. Um, you could access it through a view of uh, a satellite's view of the underground of the city and metro station. Um, you start by seeing the, the metros move uh, automatically uh, following their normal behavior, but you could um, uh, trig uh, trigger uh, one incident, for example, or one event to see how the train are going to, uh, to move uh, following what happened. And for that, we have interactive scenario, we have immersive view on uh, each of the train and each of the scenario that you can follow, uh, like you see on the screen. Uh, I talked a lot about uh, the, the video that we created, um, and uh, to give you a number, we produced in a very short time more than 33 videos from this project. And to be able to do this number in a short time, um, like I said, uh, Movie Render Queue Sequencer uh, was, was really uh, a huge help, and, um, and uh, everyone could take their asset, start building uh, the scene that he needed, or shoot directly into the main scene uh, to create the video that he needs uh, following the uh, storyboard that was already created uh, and validated with Alstom. Um, we um, also uh, created some external application using the same data and the same project uh, for uh, other type of use. Um, we have for the services um, also interactive scenarios, uh, more stylized uh, view of uh, what Alstom uh, uh, have to offer in the service part, and also, for example, a focus on uh, one of the product Alstom, which is the uh, high-speed train uh, Avelia Horizon. So here's a little um, overview of the project from start to finish, uh, how we started with the first concept art on the top left, uh, to the blocking phase, uh, that you can see is the first blocking phase uh, and the first drawing of the storyboards. And uh, then you can see on the, in the middle uh, more intermediate um, images with the setup of the city and the beginning of the road, the beginning of the railways, the train without shaders, but uh, with the system to deform the gangways and everything uh, already at work. And on the right, after seven months, uh, what it can do thanks to uh, um, Unreal Engine 5. Now that the first release of the project um, it has uh, been um, given to the different client of um, Alstom through a big event uh, in September, um, we can say that this project and this universe is really the first step. Uh, because we created it in an uh, evolutive way uh, and it was the foundation for something bigger. The idea is really to expand this, uh, this world, to get more uh, train on it, to get more scenario, to make the city bigger, um, to access other parts, um, and to evolve also with the need of what Alstom needs uh, from this interactive uh, city. Um, some of the things that we uh, are thinking uh, or started working on is really to create um, immersive training inside of the city uh, using VR, um, to create a web connection uh, to, uh, to see uh, the data inside the virtual sh showroom. Um, we maybe organize a virtual event inside of the, uh, the virtual city. Um, we even, like you saw uh, with Alexi, uh, created the start of creating virtual production uh, using the, the data of uh, the virtual city. Um, and why not uh, um, soon um, a very uh, connected and interactive world where everyone from the uh, employee of Alstom to their client can connect and collaborate into the same world. Thank you for listening. 
and hope you enjoy it. <laughs>